the metal shearing process now we can also call it as the mechanics of sheet metal operation <music> here when the force is applied by the punch on the top of the sheet what is going to happen the top of the sheet is basically uh, compressing elastically where at the bottom portion of the sheet is getting elongating elastically yes or no so but the difference between this compression elastic compression here and elastic elongation the the amount of elastic compression and elastic elongation are not same the elastic compression is huge much larger than the elastic elongation okay now as this punch is moving further inside this uh, tie what will happen this amount of compression is go on increasing than the amount of elongation elastic elongation and in the same material we are having at one portion the huge elastic compression where at the another portion the elastic elongation because of these differences the material is realizing or experiencing the stresses the shear stresses okay now by the time when the punch is again moving further this difference between the elastic compression and elastic elongation is much higher and because of that the stresses induced in this sheet material goes beyond the ultimate shear strength of the material and as you know, as the stresses which are induced in the material goes beyond the shear ultimate shear strength of the material what will happen students yes of course the material is going to crack or material is going to shear so here as this stresses induced in the sheet metal right get more than the ultimate shear strength of this material the crack is going to appear or shear is going to start from this corner of the punch a and the corner of the die d okay and this cracks are now going to propagate inside this material in the respective direction okay so first thing is that the shearing because of the stresses induced more than the ultimate shear strength the shearing is going to occur at the corner of the punch and the corner of the die this is the shearing part of the process and now this shear inside this material is now going to uh, propagate in the respective direction as this, uh, this is a kind of the energy and when this crack from this punch corner A and the die corner D are meeting somewhere in the middle of the sheet okay when these cracks are going to meet somewhere in the middle of the sheet the slug or this part is going to separate it by this main sheet isn't it so when these two cracks are meeting each other somewhere in the middle of the sheet it is known as tearing operation okay so what is the mechanics of sheet metal operation you can say now the shearing and tearing shearing is the formation of the crack at the punch and die corners and tearing is nothing but the energy propagation or the crack propagation and these cracks are meet together within the material and the part is getting cut isn't it see here as the punch descends further this local deformation increases and when local strain in the surface fibers reaches the limiting value for the work material of the fiber ruptures the crack starts just ahead of the punch corner but with the advancement of the punch the inner fibers also get ruptured and starts advancing from the both sides okay now the important thing is that and that should become in your mind is that how these two cracks which are getting started from the corner of the punch and corner of the die are going to meet 
exactly within the material within the sheet thickness isn't it so it may ha happen like that the crack should not meet meet each other okay so yes this is important thing so these two cracks are meeting together within this sheet because of the provision of optimum clearance okay so clearance is very important thing and this clearance is only the thing which is meeting these two cracks okay so what is about this value of the clearance so the optimum value of the clearance is 0 0.0032 times thickness times root of shear strength of the material so this is actually optimum clearance which is used in the punch and die to have the meeting of the two cracks okay now what will happen see here if you are not having the accurate clearance so maybe you are using a very low clearance value or maybe you are using the very high value of clearance okay so see here these are the three three diagrams we can see here one thing when we are using the appropriate clearance or the correct clearance so definitely the crack from the die and crack from the punch are going to meet with each other okay now if if you provide the clearance much lesser than the required value what will happen so there may be will be the multiple cracks of the sheet the sheet will get cut into three pieces isn't it so one crack will go here one crack will come here okay like that we are having the multiple cracks of the sheet and when we are going to use very high clearance between the punch and die so it is simply like a forming operation the punch is going to simply pull this sheet into the die so there will not be any cutting operation okay see here the crack of the die from here this is the crack from the die end and this is the crack from the punch end okay so these cracks are not meeting anywhere so simply the punch is going to pull the sheet into the die there will not be any sheet cutting operation there will be just a forming operation okay so this is very important clearance is very important thing the amount of clearance depends upon the thickness of the sheet and ductility of the work material for steels this clearance varies from 5 to 8 percent of the thickness of the sheet and larger clearance up to 10 percent required for the aluminum for the steel the clearance value from 5 to 8 percent of the sheet thickness for the aluminum it is 10 percent of the sheet thickness so same thing is written here if the clearance between the punch and die is too large or too small the crack started at the punch and die do not meet definitely they will not meet the additional bands of the metal must be sheared in such a case to complete the separation this leads to higher cutting forces and cut the edges are generally not smooth excessive clearance also causes a large radius to form to be formed at the corners of the slug and the workpiece for that reason the approximate value of the optimum of curve clearance for the sharing operation on each side is obtained by the relation this c is equal to 0 0.0032 times t under root tau so this is the optimum clearance this is one side or you can say this is a radial clearance for diametral multiply this clearance by 2 then it will be 0 0.0064 times thickness of the sheet times under root of shear strength of the material now what are the effects of this shear angle okay so why the shear is provided basically so students very important function of this shear whether it is provided on the punch or provided on the die is to have the lowering of 
the cutting forces in the sheet metal operation okay so shear is provided on the punch or die to reduce the forces required on the punch often to accommodate the operation on a lower capacity machine available in the shop so the important function of shear to reduce the cutting forces in the sheet metal operation so see here this is the punch and this is the die here no any shear is provided okay and here you can see the, the base of this punch is tapered okay or cut inclined this is one side and this is two side this is the unbalanced shear provided on the punch and this is the balanced shear like from two sides that's why it is balanced shear okay the same fashion you can provide the shear on on die also okay so the purpose of shear is to distribute the shearing action over a period of time so that punch does not contact the workpiece over its entire length at the same time of course here so during the operation here the entire length of the punch in contact with the sheet metal for the operation whereas here initially this point will be in contact with the sheet after some time this point will come in contact with the sheet after again for for some time after some time this point this point so not entire punch length is in contact with the sheet at a single time but it it will take time isn't it so the same thing is written here the purpose of the shear is to distribute the shearing action over a period of time so that the punch does not contact the workpiece over its entire length at the same time or same stroke the provision of shear as mentioned earlier does in no way affect affect the total work required to complete the shearing operation so this shearing operation will not going to affect the total work or total work done required to complete the shearing operation okay so either you are having the shear or you are not having the shear there is no any difference between the two conditions for the work done okay so work done in no shear condition or the work done in the shear condition here shear is provided here shear is not provided but here the work done is same how so as i told you the main function of the provision of shear to minimize the cutting force okay so here definitely the entire punch length in contact with this sheet at a single stroke or at a single time but here it will take a time to get the entire length of the punch to get contact with the sheet but see here if you talk about the work done work done is what force into distance so here force is maximum definitely here we know without shear definitely force is maximum but here see the length work done distance traveled is less isn't it here the shear is provided so definitely because of shear the load is less but the length is see with the length is more yes or no so that is the thing so here force is maximum but length is minimum here force is minimum but length is maximum this is one of the assumption in sheet metal operation that we are saying that work done or energy in shearing with the shear or without shear are same okay so the force how to calculate the force the force required for the stripping depends primarily on the thickness of the sheet size and number of the holes and the location of the holes small holes in the middle of the sheet or holes in thicker material require more stripping force than the holes in the thin sheet okay so a number of punches located close to each other or punches with the rough walls are comparably more difficult to strip than a single punches with the smooth walls in general stripping forces vary from 2.5 to 20% of the punch force 
but 5 to 10 percent is quite satisfactory in most of the cases. How to calculate this stripping force? The stripping force Fs is equal to K into L into T where the K is the stripping constant depending upon the material and size and location of the cut. T is the stock or sheet thickness and L is the perimeter of the cut. Say for example, if we are going to produce a hole, then what is the perimeter? That is pi d. Okay. Into thickness of the sheet. Into this k value will be the stripping force. So, thank you.